Its destination, according to police sources, was from Soma via Kiang, where five members of the same family boarded the vehicle en route to the Kombos. Upon reaching the tiny settlement of Tanane, a village near Sotokoi, and in the middle of heavy downpour, according to police, the vehicle somersaulted, leaving five occupants of the vehicle dead. These pictures were taken by a passerby who captured scenes of the aftermath of the accident. This is one of many road traffic accidents being reported in recent days. News that asked the police calling on road users, particularly drivers, to exercise caution on the road. People involved uh, vehicle, uh, a Mitsubishi Pajero, um, registration number NAO, meaning National Audit Office 4. Mm -hmm. And it was being driven by Ali Undur. Um, they were coming from Soma, and when they arrived at Kian Nema, they gave a ride to Kadi Fadera, Keba Lang Fadera, Fatu Jawara, Bar Bara Jawara, and Jawarandeng Jawara, and two other people. Mm -hmm. And when they arrived at Tanene, the rear left tire burst, and the vehicle somersaulted. The five reported casualties in the tragic accident in Tanane are believed to have hailed from the same family in Kiang. Police have yet to identify the possible cause of that accident, but the regular theme of speeding continues to surface in such accidents. This factor, coupled with the uncomfortable nature of driving in the rains, not to mention the often highly dangerous rush during the lead-up to the fast break hour, all remain critical cause of concern for the police. The rainy season alone has its own problems. problems yeah. um, driving during the rains is a very tricky thing, and one needs to be very cautious. Yeah. Whatever you do during the, um, during the um, dry season, you must ensure that during the rainy season you are extra cautious. I mean, the speed at which you drive should be lessened. Um, you must always make sure that your car is in very good order any time anytime before you um, um, hit the ignition and so on. Uh, also, we have uh, the Ramadan as well. Um, at 7 or 6 onwards, mm -hmm. everybody is in a rush and people are kind of oblivious as to how they should drive. Uh, they are oblivious as to who's going to cross the road and so on. And they are just in a rush. They want to reach home so that they will be able to break their fast on time. But look, the issue is this. The traffic rules haven't changed for this period. And so we, we must stick to them. And unless we do so, these fatalities that we are incurring will continue. After carefully observing reported cases of road traffic accidents, Police PRO David Kujabi has some rather disturbing statistical breakdown of the number of state-owned vehicles and private vehicles involved in such traffic accidents, something he says needs redressing. Um, from my observation, most of these accidents we are registering mm -hmm. are not from commercial drivers. They are either private vehicles or government-owned vehicles. What would be your advice to them? Um, my advice would be, look, they are not an exception. Okay, um, commercial drivers, I must commend them, they are doing a lot. They are adhering to the rules and regulations that must be um, followed on the traffic. But it seems um, with private uh, vehicle owners and state-owned vehicles, they think they are an exception to this rule. They are not supposed to rush. They are supposed to comply to what the road use language says. And unless they do, I mean, they are going to create a lot of problems for us. And believe us, I think um, we are going to anticipate more in prosecuting offenders, whether you are state, whether you are driving a state-owned vehicle or not. The offenses apply to everyone. Asked what the police will do to stem the tide in the increasing occurrences of road traffic incidences, ASP Kujabi remarked, "The same as we have always done, but the more important thing is," he said. Drivers and pedestrians will need to use the road in the most effective manner, he concluded. Until then, tragic news of accidents such as the one in Tanane and elsewhere can hardly be avoided on our roads. For Jartres News, this is Babukar Sengon. More than 30 youths from across the country have been exchanging ideas on various ways geared towards enhancing their advocacy and leadership skills at a program bankrolled by Axon 8, the Gambia and Activista. As we hear in this report by Ibrahim Abalde, the training is specifically tailor-made for youths who are willing to join the anti-poverty crusade. have decided to turn up knowing full well 
that they stand to gain more by attending and participating in this anti-poverty crusade. They come from various places across the length and breadth of the Gambia to receive training in leadership skills and ways and means of enhancing their advocacy skills in line with modern methods. The skills and the tools of using social media in order to mobilize more people to join our campaign, to join our crusade, to see a poverty free wall in the Gambia. Armed with the requisite skills to complement national development endeavors, the youths have been tasked with the responsibility of reflecting on crucial national issues. I think one thing also you should be doing is to also be reflecting on our policies, national policies. So if we target in the page, in the uh, ANR policy or any other sector policy for that matter, we must be clear as to what we want to achieve in those policies. And I think to be able to advocate, to be able to campaign effectively, we need to understand these instruments to the tip of our fingers. Having been exposed to the techniques of fighting poverty, the message from the youth leaders are clear. Commitment is the buzzword. And this is only possible if we are really committed to what we are here for. Go to the session. It's going to be very hard. If had someone told you it's going to be a five days of party, the person has really misled you. Instead, it's going to be five days and it's going to be very, very hectic. We are here to learn and go back and share with others in our regions. Training is very crucial for an individual or institution. Without it, work can hardly be effective or efficient. The onus now lies on this youth cohort to translate or put into practice what this training was all about. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS News. The waterway in Tajikistan was the scene of a massive exercise as cause of youths and women pushed to clean the gutters. The activity is carried out to facilitate proper functioning of the drainage system, which is often blocked by waste. Babukar Senghor tells us more. Members of the Serekunda Central Youth Development Association have embarked on a cleansing exercise from the Gulf Petrol Station along Churchillstown towards Stalingrad Market, aimed at allowing easy passage of water. Such activity, which is mostly done during the popular end of month Setter, is on this occasion carried out in the intense heat of the Ramadan month. As the KMC mayor explains, the cleansing exercise is obviously required since lack of such initiatives will otherwise hinder the movement of people and vehicles. It's all geared uh, towards what is happening around this environment where we are right now. If you can uh, recall, you can see it uh, even on TV. When there is rainfall, there is a big problem here. In fact, the way vehicles are going right now, that's how it happens. Because there is a complete blockage all over. In fact, the drains are no more useful. So this is what uh, the youth came out to say they, are, they want to do it voluntarily to give out a helping hand for it to happen. The drainage system, including these gutters, according to Mayo Collie, is meant for easy flow of water as opposed to garbage dumping, while urging people, especially those resident in the area, to use the facility for the right purpose. Then let them not use the gutters to, to throw garbage. In fact, it harms them, it will harm them. Because the repercussion is going to be on them, more so the people who are living near the gutters. They should not allow people to come from far away and come and dump in their presence. They should not allow that. And if they continue that, in fact, the force to suffer is the people who are living near the, near the, near the, near the gutters. Despite the energy and other demands of the first month, women volunteers, including the Serekunda Central Lady Councilor, Aji Amijata and Fatu City, we are at the forefront of the exercise. The duo raised similar concerns regarding the negative attitudes of residents of the neighborhood, such as littering gutters, which results in water blockages. The day's activity is largely pioneered by youths of the Serekunda Central constituency, although it is embraced by a fair turnout of women. Mundai and Amadumbai spoke of the importance of the gutter cleansing exercise. We, we normally go and sensitize people not to be throwing rubbish in this gutter. But we will take it in our own hand to make sure that we do closer monitoring around this area. Whoever we see is throwing any littering in, the, in this gutter, 
We will make sure that we will take you to the uh, right authorities. 